All right. Next part. So we did, we did a, uh, actually, um, pulmonary ventilation and volumes and capacities. Now we want to think about what happens when you, what, what's happening in terms of the microscopic portion of respiration. Okay. So here I got my nice little thing going on. I think I told some of you in office hours I had never made this before. Uh, actually, I did make it. I made it last semester. But for your class, I added pulmonary and systemic circuit on top of it. So that's what we're actually going to do here too. So on one side, we have our alveolus. Remember, when we, when we have our alveolus, air is going to come in to the alveolus, right? And air goes out of the alveolus. We have our heart here. We're just going to set up our heart so that we have, and I'm going to kind of break it, not break it, but I'm going to create a slightly different chart than what I did previously here so that you guys can see that, yes, this is the right side, this is the left side, okay? So over here on... Uh, sorry, let me put a division down the middle also, just like that. So what I'm going to see is I'm going to have my pulmonary trunk leading to my pulmonary artery, just like that. When I come to the pulmonary artery, I'm going to make my pulmonary capillary perfect. Then my pulmonary capillary is going to become my pulmonary vein, and my pulmonary vein is going to bring blood back towards my left atrium. Oops, sorry, I got really thin right there, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Then don't forget, from the left ventricle, we're going to have the aorta. As the aorta comes off, it's going to go towards the body. That's part of our systemic circuit. And if you're like, what happened to this other part of the pulmonary trunk, just, just make it like that. Again, we're going to have our systemic capillaries. I probably need this to be a little bit bigger, but I'll just make this pulmonary capillary a bit wider. I just need my pulmonary capillary to maybe be a bit wider so that I can actually draw inside of it. And my, and my systemic capillary so I can draw inside of it also. Right, so that my, there's my aorta coming that way. And then we're going to see that my pulmonary capillary is going to become my superior and inferior vena cava, which are going to dump over there to my right atrium. Okay, it's not pretty. This is not pretty. I did it much better in office hours, but, you know, bear, bear with me, okay, you guys? My writing situation is not as good as all of your iPads, basically. Yeah, let me fix that just a little bit. So superior and inferior vena cava are going to hook up here with our systemic capillary right there. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up the whole situation of external and internal respiration. Over here, we have external respiration. Remember, external respiration is between the alveoli and blood. And then I'm just going to move my picture here. Then we have internal respiration. Internal respiration goes between the systemic capillary and the body cells, okay? So the first thing you want to do is you just want to set up, me, you want to set up where oxygen and carbon dioxide levels are going to be high and low. So as air comes in, remember our oxygen concentration in our alveoli is high, okay? And remember, as blood comes off of the right side of our heart, we're going to have the fact that we're going to have a low O2 concentration. Because remember, our carbon dioxide concentration is actually higher. Okay. 
Like, if you don't have enough room, just move where your capillary is. There. And then we're going to remember that air, air coming in is actually low in carbon dioxide. So we're going to have a lower carbon dioxide level in the alveoli. So what this so what you have to understand is that in normal everyday biology how everything works in on planet earth in terms of nature things move from high to low. So if you have a high concentration stuff in the high concentration moves to the low concentration. So what that tells me is that here carbon dioxide is going to move through the alveol move through the alveolar membrane, right? These are the type one cells. It moves through that and into the alveolus. And then as we exhale, it gets pushed out. Okay. Since carbon dioxide, uh, I'm sorry, since oxygen levels are high in the alveolus and low in our pulmonary capillary, it's going to move from the alveolus through the type one cells into our pulmonary capillary. So if you don't know what that is, this is pulmonary capillary. Right? You guys should go and do the transport, the pulmonary and systemic circuits. If you do not know pulmonary and systemic circuits yet, you should. You should already 100% know this. Okay? You should definitely make sure you already know this. Sorry. So what's going to happen here is that oxygen is now going to travel on our red blood cell, right? So oxygen gets loaded into our red blood cell. It's going to travel back to the systemic circuit. And now we're going to have our red blood cell here with our oxygen bound to it. Let's figure out, we're going to figure out what's going to happen to uh, carbon dioxide in a minute. So what that means is over here, this is our systemic capillary. Oh, I can't write that way. I'm just going to write it like this. Okay. We're going to see that we have a high concentration of oxygen. And we have a low concentration of carbon dioxide. We already got rid of the carbon dioxide, so we just have oxygen. Our body cells are going to have a low concentration of oxygen because as soon as oxygen gets inside of the cell, it's going to convert it into carbon dioxide through cellular respiration. So we should see we have a high amount of carbon dioxide in our body cell. So again, remember, what's happening here is what that means is carbon dioxide is going to move from high concentration to low concentration in the systemic capillary, whereas oxygen is high in the systemic capillary, so it gets moved to the low area, which is inside of the body cell, okay? Now, when carbon dioxide enters here, what's going to happen is it's going to enter into the red blood cell. So we're going to just do this. So carbon dioxide goes into the red blood cell. And when it does, carbon dioxide plus water eventually ends up creating bicarbonate and hydrogens, which then get released into plasma. So actually what you're moving is bicarbonate and hydrogens around, okay? So when we get to the, from the right side, what we're actually moving here is high, uh, I'm sorry, bicarbonate and hydrogens. So when we get to our when we get to our alveolus, essentially what has to happen is this bicarbonate has to go back into the red blood cell. And we're going to say bicarbonate plus hydrogen. It's going to go through a couple of steps and it's going to create carbon dioxide plus water. And then it's the carbon dioxide that leaves that then we're gonna push out, okay? This is what's happening in terms of gas transport. You remember, you're not transporting carbon dioxide mostly. You're mostly transporting bicarbonate and hydrogen. A little bit of car carbon dioxide stays in the red blood cell and a little bit stays in plasma, but 70% is going as bicarbonate and hydrogens. 
all right? You should understand pulmonary and systemic circuit. What that means is you should be able to fully label this heart and all of these blood vessels and all of the uh, valves and everything for how blood gets transported through the heart towards the systems or the bodies and towards the lungs. I think that's opposite side, but it's okay. Because you should have already known that. We already went through this. This is the reason why you have to understand how blood flows through the heart. So you understand why carbon dioxide and oxygen are high in certain places and low in certain places for gas exchange. Not to mention when we get to urinary system, you also have to understand where is that waste coming from and why is it coming in that direction, okay?